G'day, VetTech. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Matthew Van I'm a Tom Lost Photographer living on the channel of Tom Lost and Tutorials. GoPro has sent me the Hero 9 Black, their latest flagship action camera with more screens, more pixels, more battery life, more everything. In this video, I will be reviewing as non-biased as I can be. I'm obviously a big GoPro fan. I will be showing you how good this camera is for time-lapse and hyperlapse photography. And I will be sharing with you the best settings so you too can shoot great time-lapses and hyperlapses on this great action cam. Let's begin. Straight off the bat, I want to say big props to GoPro. The Hero 9 Black is the first GoPro to ship in a reusable case with no plastic packaging, so that's fantastic. Now, apparently this is a VIP kit, uh, which is weird because I'm not a very important person, but, uh, you know, they are forgiven. Anyways, let's have a look at what's inside, which I think might be slightly different from what the normal, uh, the normal, what the, uh, the average consumer will get when they buy this, because... This has an extra battery, for example, and I'm not sure if everyone gets this grip. But yeah, anyways, this is the Hero 9, come on, mate. The Hero 9 Black, which uh, has a little mounting option here, this removable lens, a second LCD screen in the front, a new latch mechanism here on the side, with, you know, battery and obviously micro SD card goes in there, and that just kind of clips like that record button, mode button on the side, and the built-in little uh, feet thingies. Here is a quick size comparison. Now that we're here, might as well do it anyway. With the Hero 8. Uh, so as you can see, slightly, slightly bigger. Slightly bulkier, slightly thicker, slightly more. Slightly more everything. How nice. As I will be talking about in this video, I really loved the 8 and I love the 9 even more, so that's great. What else is in this box? This is um, ooh, there's a little bit of plastic. Uh, this is the magnetic, so this is a magnet. I don't have anything to show that to you right now. Does that work? No, it's aluminum. Anyways, yeah, magnetic mount, swivel mount, and also a clippy mount. So that's very cool to have. In here is a USB-C cable. And so yeah, this kit came with two batteries, and once again, quick comparison, this is an 8 battery versus a 9 battery, so quite the difference, quite uh, a lot beefier, bulkier, about 30% uh, more battery in the 9, which is very good. Then yeah, again, I'm not entirely sure if this uh, is in the normal kit as well. I thought there was tripod legs in here, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Then we also have the standard uh, couple mounts. This is, you know, the uh, curved stick-on mount. This is a tall, uh, what do you call that? You know, the slidey bit. This is a shorter one and two of the screws. And then I was also sent a uh, little pamphlet. This card, you can pause that. You can pause that as well to get your uh, ideal shooting settings. Little 32 gig memory card, um, I guess a commitment to the less plastic. This is some nice recycled paper, it feels like. And yeah, just basic uh, basic other folders in there. And yeah, and this nice little reusable box. All right, that's the unboxing. Now let's move on to the specifications and what I love about uh, this camera. Let's go over the specifications that are relevant to time-lapse and hyperlapse photography. There's plenty of other reviewers out there that will cover everything else, but as per usual, I'm a time-lapser, so that's what I talk about. Let's go over these time-lapse specs, shall we? A brand new sensor, which has 23.6 megapixels, which can result in 5K video. If you're shooting stills, the stills will have 5,184 pixels by 3,800 and 88 pixels multiply those and you get 20.1 megapixels which is big enough to generate 5k video files out of the sequences of photos that we'll be shooting i'm sure that you know this by now the highest possible quality time lapses are created by shooting a series of raw photos and they are then turned into a video file this gopro obviously also has all these built-in features which generates a video file on the spot but for the highest possible quality workflow you go from raw photos to a video file. As I mentioned, the photos can be recorded as a JPEG or as a JPEG and a .gpr file or a GoPro RAW file, RAW, RAW file, RAW file, 
<laughs> stop it, raw file at the same time. Now the downside there is that the minimum interval drops to five seconds, but we'll talk about that later. The positive side is the storage space. So a JPEG file I've noticed is between two to four megabytes per photo, which is negligible and the raw file is only about six to six and a half megabytes per file. And that's just great because you can fit so much on even a small 32 gigabyte micro SD card. The Hero 9 Black features a new LCD screen on the front, which is useful for selfies and vlogging, not entirely super useful for time lapses, I guess, unless you're hyperlapsing yourself or you're putting your GoPro somewhere in like the corner of a room. But then I guess you'd be using your phone screen anyway to link up and make sure that your framing's right. Anyways, let's move on to the next bit. The screen on the back is about 16% bigger, which is useful for reviewing your footage and for adjusting your settings, etc. And then one of the biggest improvements to me is the 30% bigger battery. We now have 1720 mAh or milliamp hours versus 1220 from the GoPro Hero 8 Black. I have been shooting with this for the last couple of days. Battery life's amazing. Very, very pumped on this. I've disabled the front screen entirely because I haven't really used it. It's good if you need it, but it just drained the battery for me. The back screen, I've been running through London and walking through London and boating and biking and slowly walking, and the battery is just absolutely incredible. I shot from my house a 20 minute walk and then some sequences as photos and as raw files and as video files, and it only went down about 20% in battery, which is very, very good. Then the Hero 9 also has a swappable front lens, which is going to be great for filter manufacturers so that we get access to ND filters and polarizers so we can get smoother motion blur in our sequences. And you can also apparently swap the front lens out for the Hero Max lens mod, which I don't really know what it is, but I think, don't quote me on this, I think it's a lens that is extra stabilized as well and gives you a very wide field of view about 155 degrees wide so that's pretty spectacular then built in we have some smart software hyper smooth 3.0 we're already at the 3.0 which is pretty much a stabilization algorithm that gets applied as you're shooting it uses data i think from both the gyro and visual data and it stabilizes on the spot they call it gimbal like video stabilization and i have to say i fully agree with that the results you get from this hyper smooth 3.0 which is applied in Time Warp 3.0, which is where you make great hyperlapses, is just absolutely fantastic. I was out shooting with my mate Pete on a boat uh, on the River Thames, or Thames, or Thames, whatever you want to call it, and I was shooting not entirely happy at all with what I was getting on the spot because the boat wasn't what I thought it was going to be. It was hard to find spots to shoot from, and I was just kind of like winging it, and I wasn't in the zone. I wasn't feeling good when I was shooting, but then I came back home, and I reviewed these files on my computer, and I, was, I wasn't blown away, but I was very, very pleasantly surprised at how much it actually... It made it look so much better than what I thought it was on the spot. You see this movement from the side of the boat going under the bridge, and then looking backwards. All of that I thought was just lost footage and I had wasted that trip, which is very pricey by the way on these boats on the river. But yeah, the footage works and it kinda, it, it kinda, yeah, it looks much, much better than I thought it would. So these new Hyper Smooth 3.0 and Time Warp 3.0 modes are just chef's kiss, very, very good. Also now has built-in horizon leveling, which I guess goes alongside the Hyper Smooth and the Time Warp to make sure that your footage uh, stays level, which has been very useful a lot of the footage that I shot for this video, as you can see, was literally me just gripping the camera and walking without paying attention to the camera. I'm just kind of like loosely holding it in front. And then when shooting in time warp at 15x or 30x, this chooses just the, the best frames for the video it's making on the spot. And yeah, as you can see, it's it looks like it was shot on a gimbal and sped up, but it's just... Uh, shot very, very loosely on this GoPro. Very, very impressed. On top of all that, we've got a couple of more intelligent capture options like scheduled shoot or uh, duration shooting as well. Did I say that right? Duration capture and scheduled capture, which kind of is maybe based on those experimental modes that we saw through that QR hack for the GoPro Hero 8. I talk about that in this video over, over here, where pretty much you can customize all the settings of your GoPro via a QR code that you generate on a website. Uh, advanced stuff that I think now has, you know, been implemented in the newer generation GoPro. So that's great to see. Especially useful, yeah, the scheduled start shooting for if you want to shoot a sunrise or a sunset. You want to set your camera somewhere, set it and forget it, and it will just run from a certain time until a certain time. For example, just for a sunrise or a sunset. 
which is great. Then some other cool specs that aren't necessarily relevant to time-lapse or hyperlapse photography, but stuff that I find cool anyway. It's 4K 60 and 5K 30 video recording. Flies are falling around. The hindsight shooting mode where it is recording before you hit start in case you miss the action, it'll record a couple of seconds, I think up to 30 seconds before you hit the record button, which is fantastic. I assume this does use a lot more battery because it would be continuously recording into a buffer and then saving that buffer to the card as soon as you hit start. But that's great to have. That's a feature that is very useful for, I don't know, experimental YouTube shooting, I guess. Built-in webcam mode, which I will definitely be experimenting with in the uh, channel member exclusive area, which you can find in the join button down below. And then a bunch more cool stuff that I'm sure other reviewers will be talking about. Now let's go over what I love and what I don't love. Things I loved, as I mentioned, the stabilization algorithm in this is incredible. I spent quite a bit of time on the Hero 8 using Time Warp and Hyper Smooth 2.0. This has now been upgraded to 3.0. It's mind-blowingly fantastic, and I think it changes the game once again when it comes to built-in stabilization in small cameras that you can put on so many weird angles and mounts. It's fantastic. I love it. The Holy Grail mode where it shoots day to night, as you can see here, because I was in the frame and I threw the metering off, it adjusts the ISO or shutter speed minutely as opposed to in just one third of its top values. This means when it spreads that out, as it does over a period of time, you will get a smooth transition from day to night. Uh, the GoPros have been doing this really well since I think 2015. Minute adjustments, no zigzag patterns when you analyze the brightness in a holy grail or a day to night or night to day shot. So big ups on that GoPro, you nailed that once again. Obviously I love the higher resolution so that we can correct the perspective more. Yes, you lose a couple of pixels, but we will still end up with more pixels than on a standard GoPro from a previous generation. So that's good. The raw files are a great balance between extra, only a little bit extra file size, but a lot more extra editing options. So yeah, they're not heavy in file size, but you can really push and pull your shadows and your highlights or your exposure and your white balance, which is something that's always needed when shooting time-lapse photos. And I know this isn't new, but I really do like the built-in mount option and all these extra mounts that you can get for it, like the light and the microphone and the extra flip screen, etc. which I guess isn't really useful because you now have a front screen anyway. But yeah, it's cool that you get all these uh, new things, these new mounts on the new GoPros. That really doesn't make too much sense. But now let's go to the things that I don't really love which is something that I feel like is maybe an oversight in firmware, or maybe it is a data writing speed thing. When you are shooting a time-lapse with uh, the raw photos, the, G the .gpr files activated, I keep seeing flies buzzing around, so annoying. The minimum photo interval is five seconds, and that's just a long time. Most of my time-lapses are shot at a three-second interval, to go from a three to a five second interval, it's almost double, it's almost double the amount of time that you gotta sit there. Some subjects are simply too fast for a five second interval and you really wanna go with a one second or a half second interval and you can do that in normal photo mode when it's just JPEGs, but when you're shooting raw files, you can't do that. It's a minimum five second and hopefully we can see that change sometime in the future. The touchscreen, even though it is slightly bigger, about 16%, so I've been told is still a little bit finicky to operate every now and then. Maybe it's me, maybe I'm not too used to it, but I find that I still often make mistakes when swiping up or down and accidentally pushing wrong buttons, etc. So yeah, just keep an eye out for that. And that's about it, really. It's a very short list of things I don't love because I love this camera shot so much. I have been using the Hero 8 Black for months now. I've been shooting a lot on it because I do love the idea that I don't have to travel with a big, heavy mirrorless or DSLR camera. Just having that little action camera that still captures raw footage and has more megapixels, etc. now. And yeah, just fun to take it with me. I want you to let me know what you would like to see me shoot with this GoPro. Anything specific? Do you want do you want more travel? Do you want me to shoot some night stuff? Let me know and I will go and shoot it. By the way, YouTube channel members, you can become a channel member via the join button down below. We'll have access to download some of the raw files and the video files straight out of camera. Make sure to check out which tiers offer that. And that's pretty much it. Don't forget to watch these other GoPro videos I've made. A big thank you to GoPro for sending this over to me. Very much appreciated. Big thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already and if you have any questions or video suggestions, please drop it in the comments down below. Thank you so much and I'll see you on the next video. Goodbye.